Before the news report start, please like the video, so we can make 1000 likes to this report, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification by clicking the bell icon, so every time we post you'll get a notification from YouTube. Leave your patriotic opinion in the comment section below, help us with a patriotic comment in order to get this video viral. Also, share this video on Facebook and Twitter so your friends can see it. Thank you so much for your support. And now the news. Case closed. Supreme Court Justice Rock America with terrifying announcement. The Supreme Court stated Friday that the House of Representatives will be capable to participate in oral arguments later this month about the Trump administration addition of a citizenship question to the 2020 census. In an unsigned order, the court stated that representative for the Democratic Control House will be given 10 minutes through the oral argument to make their case toward the question's addition. The Supreme Court will hear the argument in the case on April 23. In an amicus brief filed in the case, representative for the House argued that Congress gave the Commerce Department the power to conduct the census but that it intended for particular limits to be placed on the authority. The brief also argues that the Commerce Department must follow the enumeration clauses of the Constitution, which calls for an actual enumeration or count of the population in order to determine representation in Congress, and that the citizenship question could disturb the capability to follow that clauses. In attempting to add a question about citizenship status to the 2020 census, outside the agency's ordinary process and against the undisputed proof that doing so will undermine the very purpose of the decennial census, the department has disregarded both the substantive limitations and the procedural safeguards that Congress created, the brief reads. The Trump administration announced last year that if uh, that it will add a question on citizenship status to the 2020 census was met almost instantly with several legal challenges. Three federal judges with this year have ruled toward the question, but the High Court's ruling to come out later this spring will be the final work on whether the question can be added to the 2020 survey. The Commerce Department, which oversees the census, has stated that it added the question at the request of the Justice Department in order to help enforce the Voting Rights Act. Critics, critics argue that asking about citizenship will uh, cause uh, some uh, people like immigrants without legal status uh, n to not fill out the census and led to an undercount of population. Census data is utilized to determine federal fundings. Thank you very much for watching our news report. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification by clicking the bell icon so every time we post you'll get a notification from YouTube. Share this video on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter so your friends can see it and very very important share your opinion in the comment section regarding this hot subject. Thank you very much and God bless you all. And now we continue our breaking news with some more breaking news report. Fierce growth Trump will abandon Afghan women to the Taliban. Jean Shahib was facing a down Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and not too pleased about it. The senator asked Pompeo to push the Afghan government and the Taliban to include Afghan women in peace talks, but he wouldn't fully commit to doing so. Senator, there are a lot of issues that we're working our way through, Pompeo told her during the exchange in a Senate Foreign Relationship Committee hearing last month. I understand that, but this is half of the population in the country, Shaheen shocked back. Yes, ma'am, I hope they will make their voice heard, Pompeo said. Shaheen, a New Hampshire Democrat and the only woman on the committee, was not reassured. The Trump administration says it cares about the future of women in an Afghanistan where the Taliban, who have a history of repressing women, 
may again have political power. State Department officials even hint that the country could lose out on, on aid funds if women's rights aren't protected. But as this week, if she believes President Donald Trump and his top allies are genuinely serious about the issue, Shaheen was uh, quiet for several seconds, then finally said, We don't know the answer to that yet. As the peace talks move forward, Shaheen is determined to move pressuring the issue of women. She visited the country last week where she assured worried Afghan women that she's not giving up on them. In many ways, though, Shaheen cuts a lonely figure in Washington. Protecting Afghan women uh, once had the vocal bipartisan support in DC. It was, after all, a cause uh, celebrated among people ranking from former First Lady Laura Bush to feminist heroine Gloria Steinem. But such political declarations have been notably sparse in recent months as the ongoing peace talks offer a shot at the US exit from a war many Americans are eager to end after nearly 18 years. The relative uh, dreads of US politics speaking out has uh, some activists fearing that Trump will compromise with the Taliban's in a way that will threaten the gains Afghan women have made since 2001, including being allowed to attend school and work outside the home. The very fact that we have to say we are the women, will women's right be protected instead of understanding that all of that is integral to the future of Afghanistan highlights the problem, said Andrea Prasso of Human Rights Watch. It's Afghanistan fatigue, she added, everyone wants to be done in one way or another. One telling moment came in late January when the Senator minority, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, a Republican, proposed a measure that warned Trump against the precipitous withdrawal from Syria or Afghanistan. The Republican president, who has an isolationist strike, has made it clear he wants to withdraw U.S. troops from both countries as soon as feasible. McConnell's measure passed the Senate, but nearly every Democrat consider running for president in 2020 voted against it. Some accused McConnell of uh, wanting to perpetuate a forever war. The 2020 Democrats' dissent was a reflection of an exhaustion with the Afghan war, even among liberals who see themselves as champions of women's rights. Shaheen, who voted in favor of the McConnell measure and its up for re-election in 2020, acknowledged the political realities on the women's issue. I think we need more support. I need to be bipartisan, she told Politico in a phone interview after her visit to Afghanistan. As part of her campaign to keep the issue in the spotlight, Shaheen in early February wrote a letter consigned by fellow Democrat Senator Bob Mendez and Patrick Leahy that urged Pompeo to include and prioritize Afghan women in the peace talks. In early April, Shaheen invited Roya Rahmani, Afghanistan ambassador to the US, the first woman in that role, as her guest for NATO Security General Jean. Stoltenberg's speech to Congress. Shaheen keeps reminding the administration that Trump in 2017 signed a bill which she spearheaded that commits the US to blustering women's role in resolving global conflicts. She future point to research that shows peace deals are, peace deals are more likely to succeed when the women are involved in crafting them. Thank you very much for watching our news report. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification by clicking the bell icon so every time we post you get a notification from YouTube. Share this video on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter so your friends can see it. And a very, very important, share your opinion in the comment section below.
we thank you very much and uh, God bless you all.